Hi there, my name is Gijsburg Pols. I work at Adjust as Lead Product Strategist. And today I'll be talking to you about Connected Television, or CTV as it's abbreviated, and gaming. Now, if you follow the outlets on the digital world, there's a huge chance that you've read an article lately that was written along the following lines. CTV is a guarantee of growth. This growth has accelerated because of the global pandemic and will continue to grow in the years to come, offering huge opportunities for advertisers in terms of reach, targeting and quality. Some of the more daring authors actually argue that we have now reached a point where desktop services were during the mid 90s and where mobile phones were about 10 years ago. Another boom, the CTV boom, is at our doorstep, if not already happening. You've been hearing this story again and again because it's basically true. According to eMarketer, the number of households in the US using CTV grew from 153 million to 207 million in 2021. Meanwhile, people are abandoning cable companies in legions. Cable connected households shrunk by 15% in 2020 and are expected to shrink by 27% in 2021. There is even a word for these people now, cord cutters. Combined with the households that never had a cable subscription in the first place, the so-called cord nevers, the households that watch television exclusively via the internet will have become the majority by the mid 2020s. And with a new impressive streaming service being launched virtually every month, there is no doubt that there is a lot of booming material around. But no, I'm not going to tell you it's all just a bubble. As we've seen with previous booms in the digital world, every boom brings about its own bubbles. And I'm sure we are going to witness a few in the emerging world of connected television. The growth we are witnessing, however, is still substantial. There will be a kind of saturation in the next couple of years, both in terms of device as well as streaming service adoption, but CTV is definitely here to stay. However, there is an aspect to the CTV boom that is overlooked. The comparison with desktop on mobile holds up, particularly when one looks at what drives the growth, freedom. Digitalization makes things easier while at the same time multiplying choice. If you're not old enough to remember the inconveniences of life, unfortunately, I'm old enough to remember, but the inconvenience of life before desktop and mobile were omnipresent, try to imagine a day in your life without a functioning and internet connected laptop and mobile phone. For television, this freedom I'm talking about means that the days of what's on tonight are over. Because their televisions are connected, people can now choose what they want to see at times when they find it convenient without having to get out of their chair they no longer need to walk to the video store or cinema, and they are no longer dependent on major studios and broadcasting companies. Yet there's an important difference between CTV on the one hand and desktop and mobile on the other. Television has a much longer legacy. The cable connected television devices that precede connected television shaped our lives far more than the devices that preceded desktop and mobile if they even existed at all. And it is precisely this legacy that keeps us from grasping the real impact of the boom of connected television sometimes. When we talk about CTV these days, we usually mention it in one breath with video streaming. While it is certainly true that CTV became a thing because Netflix became a thing, it also shows that we limit our idea of the function of CTV to one specific activity, which is watching video content. Digitalization, however, completely breaks open what people can do with a television device, particularly in terms of interaction. Data from 42 Matters is showing that streaming applications are no longer dominating CTV devices. Gaming is emerging and has managed to become the second largest category for two of the most important CTV platforms, namely Amazon Fire TV and Apple TV. On Roku, the largest CTV platform in the US market, gaming places second when it comes to usage. 
Now, it's an interesting question to what extent gaming on CTV cannibalizes gaming on other devices, particularly on mobile and consoles. Up to a point, undoubtedly. But a more nuanced answer to this question takes us back to television's legacy. Desktop and mobile devices have always been centered around the individual. A colleague may look across our shoulder when we are working on our laptops and we may hand over mobile phones so our kids can watch a funny video. But that is it about in terms of social usage. In fact, for kids these days, getting your own mobile phone is probably one of the biggest steps into adulthood. Now, television, on the other hand, has always been a far more social device. It is the modern age equivalent of the campfire in a sense that people gather around television devices with their peers to spend their leisure time and experience a sense of community. The television device, at least the biggest one, is usually to be found in the living room with the furniture put around it in such a way that every member of the household can get a good look. People discuss what they see, also in the age of connected television, and perhaps even more passionately. If you don't take that from me, ask the producers of Game of Thrones. The social nature of television will impact the games played on CTV devices. A substantial part of them will work like good old-fashioned board games played by households together, but with a fantastic visual experience and with mobile phones replacing the dice. Plus, households will be expanded by allowing others to connect to their CTV games, likely by use of mobile devices as well. The whole family can join in on a game of Monopoly, even with mum being at a conference abroad, and it will look absolutely fabulous. Okay, that is probably a bit over the top. What we should never underestimate, the interactive potential that is brought about by television being digitized, which is effectively what the CTV boom represents. Advertisers are starting to explore it already. Yes, the large bulk of ads on CTV are still good old television commercials, a short clip that is shown in between content. However, some advertisers have realized that on CTV, people hit the pause button, providing a much less intrusive ad format with a huge opportunity for contextual relevance. I've seen an ad for toilet paper popping up when I hit the pause button, for example. It is a matter of time before I can directly order that toilet paper, for example, by scanning a QR code in the ad or by telling my smart speaker to do so. I also believe we are not far off from buying items we see in the movies we watch on connected TV. What if you could directly order the suit Daniel Craig is wearing in the next James Bond movie? The James Bond movie, which, by the way, is likely to come out on a streaming service anyway. The CTV boom is here but it's a complex boom with lots of pitfalls and lots of very exciting new opportunities. It's also different from the booms we've previously seen in the digital world, as it is not happening on a sheet that is by and large empty, but it comes with a huge amount of legacy. That legacy can sometimes get in the way of our imagination, but we can also turn it into our advantage. Television has not only been big for decades, it had also been highly valued. Connecting television, making it digital, allows us to make it even bigger and more valuable. We have very exciting times ahead of us.